Well, as they say in life, ask and you shall receive. So you guys like the rapid fire segment last week. So we're gonna do another one. Here we go. Subscribe now and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. Below zero. I think Mario's suggestion we trade back and pick up Nasir Adderley and develop him as a linebacker. That's exactly McDermott's philosophy for the whole line. It just might work. I do like the idea of trading back with, the, uh, with anybody. I mean, because the Bills could acquire a lot of picks for 2020 and stack them as far as their draft picks. So they're not signing four or five guys every year. And it's going to be rare that they're going to be $70, $80 million under the cap every year because once, once some of these contracts start coming up, you start talking about Milano, White, um, the two little A's contract is just going to go up. You start talking about Tremaine Edmonds, Josh Allen. Um, a lot of these guys that are going to be coming up for contracts are going to you know, want the money if the Bills start performing as everyone expects them to perform. So in that respect, you have to kind of stack your draft pick so you can try to you know, cover yourself and have some insurance. Owen Quinlevin, sorry if I butcher your name, dude. 1253. If you're unfamiliar about what happened at 1253, here it is. Another undersized linebacker. He's only six foot tall. Uh, hands, not even nine inch hands. Tiny hands. Poor guy. Right? <laughs> I know, right? I mean, wasn't, I couldn't have been the only one thinking that, was I? This is from Test Drive. John Marilla changes for Josh Allen in 2019. Sacks and shotgun are going to be more. Usually you do shotgun on long distance downs. Now, if you go under center, if third and long, it limits certain plays. What shotgun does is it kind of limits some of the timing that goes on with the quarterbacks. And in doing so, some of the timings of the routes, you have to be, you have to have that internal clock. For a rookie quarterback to have that internal clock, usually how the, the, the quarterback position is coached you you will know by your feet and Steve Young said this about Bill Walsh and I believe it's true you will know the timing of certain routes based on your feet what step drop you are in so if I'm doing a a, a five step drop uh, you know a three step drop by the timing of by the time I'm into my drop and by the time I set up those guys will be in those certain routes for example if I do a three step drop there's gonna be a lot of slants outs arrows um, quick hitters. Well, if I do a five-step drop, that's where you get a lot of your post corners, post digs, drags, all that stuff. You can end up by the timing of the play, by the, wherever the wide receiver is going to be or tight end at that position, you know by the timing of dropping back. Now, if you're just in shotgun, that means that the coach wants you to get the ball as fast as possible so you can make the read as fast as possible. Therefore, you could throw it as fast as possible. So shotgun not nece doesn't necessarily mean that you're in a third long play. It could just be that he, the, the coach wants to get the quarterback the ball as quick as he, as he can to read the defense. All right, John Roberts. Did we just sign Perry running back from the Finns? He's a bad running back. If we did, I'm excited. Yes, they did. Uh, he was mainly a special teamer. Uh, he spent a couple, day, a couple years out of the NFL, and now he's back. You know, this thing kind of, you know, we talked about it. Uh, we're going to talk about it on an episode a little bit later this week. The money ball kind of thing that's going on right now at One Bills Drive, where you have two guys that were formerly working with the Dolphins, and uh, Dennis Hickey and Dennis Locke. Uh, some of the things that they're trying to do now, uh, they're trying to get quality players and basically buy themselves some insurance going on right now. So... Other teams, I guess, will think, hey, they got a running back already. Uh, they got rid of Ivory. It, just does, it doesn't take a running back off the table. But as far as that goes, this guy's unproven. He's coming in. He's mainly a special teamer. So um, why? I, I'm not sure. I guess they just signed him because that would have been your fifth or sixth round pick. Um, but they I actually went out and got him, which means that uh, Locke and Hickey have a very big voice at One Bills Drive about what personnel changes are. These were two guys that, when they were in Miami, they drafted Jordan Phillips. So it could be something that they have a very big voice in that room with the statistical and in the research, uh, the research aspect of what's going on at those drives. Daniel Garries again with the move Dawkins thing. I'm not against moving him if they do fine. 
with that. I'm, I'm fine with that. Just put your best five out there. But I believe that McBee still believes in him as a left tackle and sees him as a left tackle and one who, the one who has to be convinced. And I kind of doubt he's a subscriber. You know, it's, it's one of those things where you get something in your mind and it's hard to get it out. It's hard to kind of change your mind about it. Not that I'm so stubborn. It's just I just think he would be better at a, at a guard position rather than a left tackle. Uh, I, there's, there's tape for two years that has proven that. I know he's a yard tackle, but we've seen tackles and guards come into the league that are just completely dominant. And he's still trying to find his footing. He's still trying to find his way over at left tackle. Whereas if he was a guard, he wouldn't have to. That's the biggest reason I think why I believe that so much, that Dawkins should be should move down to guard. Um, and it's not, it's not, I'm not hating on the guy. I just think he would be better in that position. I mean, if you wanted to talk about, you know, could Paul drive? Yeah, I'm just better at it. Did Paul shave his eyebrows when he got his haircut? From Mikey Mike. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys watch any episodes recently, but I barely even look at the guy. <laughs> to tell you the truth. All right, Nicholas Ellums. Another great video. Bills fan from Australia. We'll make it to Buffalo one day for a game. Definitely hit us up if you do that. The, the, going to a Bills game is such an experience. You got to block off your entire Sunday. You got to block off your entire Monday. And if they win, maybe your entire Tuesday. Chuck Christopher, Jonah Williams, Dawkins, Morris, Feliciano, and Niseki sounds pretty good to me with awesome depth, too. Sounds phenomenal. Tim Ellington, and now EJ Gaines could end up being in a starting position, even. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I always found that funny uh, when teams trade or they don't re-sign a player and then the, the player ends up re-signing with that team after taking, after playing for another one. As far as EJ, EJ Gaines' place, you know, we're starting to talk about uh, Shady, uh, not Shady McCoy, but uh, Deshaun Jackson that happened in his case. I always found that to be funny. It's like when people get divorced and then remarried. It's like you go in your fridge and you go, ah, this milk is sour. Eh, maybe tomorrow it'll be fresh. And still, I disagree a little bit, Mario. You know what happens to me every day? Especially with the guy that usually sits over 